spannend ist halt, äh, wie eine, äh, hat eine Büchse geöffnet von der Pandora und dann hätte er das nicht sagen, äh, nicht machen sollen, aber es war ja klar, dass er deswegen gebannt werden wird. Ähm, ich meine das Thema eigentlich nicht, äh, weil ich davon keine Ahnung habe. Wirklich nichts. Also politisch Zeug überhaupt nicht. Und ähm, ich werde es auch sein, ich werde hier auch alles äh, wegbannen eigentlich. Äh, weil ich habe das Thema, das Thema ist, äh, da will ich gar nicht mit den Kneifzeigen anfassen, weil das so schwierig und so komplex ist, ähm, darüber zu reden. Äh, da halte ich mich äh, Gott sei Dank erstmal raus. Aber, naja, mal gucken. Why is Tisch and CSO are currently messes in trouble? Ja. Guck mal an, What do you think of when someone mentions the website twitch.tv? Maybe you think of your favorite streamer. Maybe you think of your favorite esports game. And maybe, just maybe, you think of a half-naked woman in a kiddie pool indoors. Yeah. Regardless of what your answer is, I'm sure there's some amazing memories tied to it. But when I think of Twitch, I think of a grossly mismanaged circus. A circus that is still not profitable after almost 17 years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, warte mal, wir fangen wir nochmal vorne an. Ja. <laughs> Seit 17 Jahren nicht profitabel. Man hat ja Amazon ja aufgekauft, äh, Amazon hat ja Twitch übernommen halt, aber wenn die Plattform immer nicht profitabel ist, nach 17 Jahren, noch sogar unter äh, Justin TV, äh, Gott, <lacht> das stimmt doch irgendwas nicht. Auch äh, wegen Bann und weiter sofort, irgendwelche Banngründen. Of existence. Yes, they haven't had one single profitable year ever since they were created back in 2007. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. What Twitch is also known for is their complete and utter inconsistency and lack of transparency when it comes to their genau. bans in regards to their trust and safety. Lack of transparency, also hier, keine Transparenz zeigen, das ist immer so ein bisschen doof. Auch wenn es ein Bandgrund, äh, die werden ja, äh, die müssen ja neuerdings hier Bandgründe angeben, weil da sofort, weil die sonst mäßig Strafe zahlen sollen in, in der EU. Safety Team. They show very, and I mean very clear favoritism to some streamers, while showing clear malicious intent with other streamers. Genau, This has been ja. going on since the website's inception. People were hope. Ja, das Problem ist aber auch, äh, Seit Anfang des Jahres einfach, oder es ist seit grauer Zeit schon das Problem, oder ich will mal sagen, fast ein Jahr schon. Think that this weird, immature culture of favoritism would go away slowly after Amazon had acquired the website back in 2014 for 970 million dollars. But as you might have guessed, It's a lot of money. things only got worse. Yeah. Look, as someone who's been watching Twitch for almost 10 years now, I can sit here and make a one hour video of the inconsistencies when it comes to bans and punishments on the platform. But I'll just. Das würde ich ganz gerne sehen. Die eine Stunde wegen äh, falsche Bans und weiter so fort. Das würde ich ganz gerne sehen. Das würde ich ganz gerne sehen. Show you a couple because it'll be enough for you to understand why I wouldn't trust a single Twitch employee to put the fries in the bag at a McDonald's. In 2020, the streamer Alinity was dancing on stream. She showed her nipple by mistake. That's considered adult content. In any case, she ja, got banned for one passiert. day. Cool. Passiert in the halt. same year, 2020, a well known streamer by the name of Pokimane, who I'm sure you've heard of, opened up. Ja, wegen einem. Wegen einem kurzen Blitzer, aber naja. Äh, sehe ich nicht so das Problem. Eigentlich kann passieren, sollte nicht passieren, aber mein Gott. A hub link. Okay. Dafür okay. One of the Tag biggest Bann. adult video websites. Showing what was on the front page. Yes, oh ja, das many ich. Das videos ich. of people getting penetrated. She said it was an accident. 
in the end, she only got a warning from Twitch, okay? Not even... <lacht> ja, wenn wir jetzt in Pornoseiten reingehen, weiß die Sachen, ist kurz zeigen, hat sie eine Verhandlung bekommen, aber Hauptsache äh, kurz ein Nippel zeigen oder so, kurz einen Moment oder so, gleich einen Tag bann oder so. Es geht, es geht dann noch viel schlimmer, weil Twitch ja halt ziemlich äh, willkürlich irgendwas macht. Wird noch problematisch. What you did was kind of bad. Please don't do it again. In that same year, yes, I don't know what happened in 2020 in particular. Forsen, a very well-known streamer, clicked on an Imgur link in his chat, something he does all the time. What he didn't know, though, was that it was a GIF. It started off as an image of a meme and then transitioned into a woman sucking on a horse sausage. Yes, you heard that right. A horse sausage. I can't go into more detail. We're on YouTube. Regardless, though, oh, it God. wasn't intentional. Yeah. He had no idea. It was a troll in chat. What happened? He got banned. In Deswegen sage ich immer, keine Links draufklicken. <lacht> immer mal keine Links draufklicken. Außer es ist von, äh, von mir, von meiner Seite aus. Und genau deswegen. Definitely, yes. Forever with no date of an unban. Only getting his ban reversed after more than a month. Now check this out. A streamer oh, was getting God. back shots live. Oh, see, ey. Oh. <laughs> see. Live on stream while replying to chat. This went on for multiple minutes as she was getting railed from behind. She gets banned. But for one week. She comes back to streaming. Also. <laughs> also. <laughs> yeah. Also, wenn ihr uh, spicy Sachen macht, wird ihr noch für, für eine Woche gebannt. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. And blows up. She has over 30,000 followers. You see the genau. pattern here? Exactly. There is no pattern. Just es clear favoritism pattern. and malice towards specific streamers. This is why for a long time, no one could take the platform seriously. In fact, for a long time, there was this running joke. The head of partnerships at Twitch, who has been there for over a decade, even after Amazon buying the company, yep. was a man called Hassan Bukhari. People would joke that female... Oh God, not er. ...male streamers got special treatment due to Hassan. Those jokes became rumors, and those rumors became out of control. Especially genau, with ja. all the terrible decisions Twitch was making at the time. This prompted Hassan to tweet this in June of 2019, saying, I do not have anything to do with Twitch suspensions or moderation actions. If you or your friend needs help in this regard, please see this link. I cannot do anything about suspensions or unsuspending you, pinning tweet. Making many feel sorry for him. That hey, man, maybe these jokes are getting out of hand. Well, <laughs> these jokes were not crazy enough because not even a year after this, in 2020, Twitch fired Hassan Bukhari over abuse of power. As the Me Too yeah, movement yeah, was going yeah. on, people were leaking messages of Hassan not only asking for these inappropriate favors from female creators, but also showing them off to his friends. There was a certain instance where he received nudes from a certain female Twitch streamer And the first thing he did was join a voice chat with his friends and show it off, saying, oh my god, guys, I just received their boobs. Oh my god, check this out. No, this man was the ey, head of partnerships. Okay, he had the ability... That is so kindergarten verhalten. But na good. <laughs> na good. ...to give you partner if you wanted to as well, which he definitely did so if you sent him inappropriate images as a female creator. And bear in mind, this was six years after Amazon had dished almost a billion dollars to acquire the website. This showed us that even after all these years, Twitch had the organizational structure of a startup. Except, it only had the negative aspects of a startup with no positives. Anything from favoritism yeah, yeah, to yeah, cringy-ass yeah. bro culture to unprofessionalism and a lot, I mean a lot of moments where they were just winging it. Many people place the blame on Emmett Shear, one of the original five co-founders of Twitch.tv, or Justin.tv as it was yeah, known yeah. before the name change. The public perceived Emmett as someone who had zero control over the company, as someone who was more... Mm, CEO Emmett Shear resigned after 16 years. 
und das hier auch so Livestream Plattform das Browser irgendwie Steam und James okay <clears throat> concerned with network engineering with the website's infrastructure rather than its culture and trust and safety policies After resigning in March of 2023, people were hoping that his successor would finally be able to steer Twitch in the right direction and make it go from unprofessional frat club to an actual professional functioning company who is a subsidiary of Amazon. The person replacing him as Twitch CEO hey, was the person 50, who used to be the Dan. president of Twitch, who is Dan Clancy, someone who used to work at NASA and Google and NASA Google gearbeitet. Eigentlich müsste das so wissen, wie das läuft, ne? Der Typ ist der 50-50 Dan. It somehow ended up at Twitch. From day one, he did his best to show everyone that he was the hip. Uh, uh, wegen Dan's Gläse kann ich nicht viel sagen. Um, <lacht> viele sagen ja ihnen, dass er auch 50-50 ja, Dan heißt. Was ich aber sehr lustig finde. Aber er macht auch sehr viele Sachen halt. Also er probiert die äh, Plattform selber aus und äh, macht Kurlaub mit anderen Leuten zusammen und um zu sehen, wie die äh, Plattform äh, funktioniert und was es besser, äh, verbesserungswürdig ist, weil da sofort ist. Ist nur meine CEO. Ich würde es mir wünschen, wenn mehr so, solche Leute das machen würden. Bei, äh, Betrieben weiter sofort zu gucken, was läuft, was ist verbesserungswürdig, weiter sofort. Ja, mein Verbesserungsvorschlag wäre, macht die App wieder wie vorher war, nicht dieses TikTok-App da. Oder beziehungsweise zeigt mir das an, wenn welche Leute live sind und nicht irgendwelche random Leute zum Startbildschirm. Das wäre mal sehr, sehr, sehr hilfreich, bitte. Besonders wenn ich die Leute geblockt habe. Cool CEO, someone who sought to understand streamers at a core and fundamental level to give them exactly what they want. He went genau, on ja. to do so many collabs with bigger streamers, smaller genau, streamers, you name it, gerade. and even started streaming himself weekly genau. on his Twitch channel, really emphasizing the fact that he was here. And just like when Amazon was buying Twitch, people were yet again hopeful, optimistic that this was finally going to lead Twitch in the direction it so desperately needed to go to. But guys. Äh, Anfangs Zeit war er, äh, wie, wie gesagt, ziemlich gut gewesen. Aber ja, in letzter Zeit ist es ein bisschen, was mit Bann angeht, gegen Videos und so alles, äh, naja, sehr fragwürdig, würde ich mal sagen. Sehr, sehr, sehr fragwürdig. The website got infinitely worse. There was yet again a complete lack of direction. I'm sure you remember the whole fiasco that happened with the pools, hot tubs, and beaches genau, category. Ja, ja. Twitch simply so did schlimm. not know what it wanted to be or who to cater to. They would always keep revising their terms of service to the point where things don't really make much sense even by today's standards because things are not enforced equally. Favoritism is still very much present. One of the biggest incidents on Twitch, just in general, das war so schlimm. <lacht> Wie kannst du äh, TOS verstoßen und Twitch macht gar nichts dabei? Äh, das ist schon Death Rats wünschen. Das ist schon Death Rats. Das ist schon TOS sowas zu wünschen. Dass man eine, äh, eine Person von der Plattform verschwindet. Das ist sowas von TOS. In jeder Plattform because of how ridiculous it is, was in 2024, at the end of April. A streamer by the name of Denims on the left here said on stream that she would pay $30,000 to whoever made Asmongold disappear. Yes, I'm serious. This actually happened. She didn't say, hey guys, I'm just joking. Haha. <laughs> no. She said it with a serious straight face like the one you're seeing right here. And erstmal. unfortunately for Denims, we're not in the American Wild West of the late 1800s. You can't just put a bounty on someone's head like this. It's without exaggeration to say that this is a federal crime. Now, genau. Twitch's terms of service say that violence on Twitch is taken seriously and is considered a zero tolerance violation. And all accounts associated with such activities on Twitch will be indefinitely suspended. Yeah, and yet here she was calling so, for her fellow streamer Asmongold's assassination. 
You would think that Twitch would do something about this, right? No. Well, <laughs> no. She didn't get banned and she faced zero consequences for okay, no. doing this. That's Dan Clancy's Twitch. I also need to mention the fact that very recently, in October of 2024, Twitch made it illegal for VTubers to show their hips. Yes, virtual care. Das ist so dumm. Das ist so dumm. Aber die Regelungen gibt es ja schon seit über zwei Jahren halt, dass der ähm, die Hüfte bedenken soll. Weiter sofort wegen. Äh. Aber meistens VTubers haben die Hüfte frei. Auf jeden Fall weibliche. Ich verstehe nicht. Ausschnitt darfst du oben zeigen, aber Unterbrüfs darfst du gar nicht mehr zeigen oder so. Das macht doch keinen Sinn, wenn ich oben drauf gucke und wenn es frei ist und wenn ich unten drauf gucke, ist es auch frei ist, ist es dasselbe eigentlich. Aber gut, weiter. Characters can't show their hips. Yet when you go to the pools, hot tubs and beaches category, you see this. Make ja, <lacht> das auch. Das Problem ist, wenn äh, das ist nur diese Hot Pools äh, stream, ähm, stream halt, ne, Kategorie. Äh, so lange im Pool ist und dann, wenn bei manchen Leuten, äh, oder die twitch meter Anfang des Jahres, ähm, die hatten, waren in der Wohnung, haben den Pool gezeigt und durften sie, äh, naja, halb nackt rumrennen. Das ist nicht okay. Also, da würdest du nicht gebannt, aber wenn Zentrea äh, jetzt äh, in VR-Chat oder so, äh, oder ein Hintergrundbild, ne? Äh, kann ich kurz mal meins zeigen. So wird das hier. Äh, und wenn ich jetzt ein Model hätte in, äh, ja, äh, äh, Schwimmshoot äh, Outfit oder so halt. Ich hasse Schwimmen. Äh, oder wenn ich jetzt hier äh, nicht nackt hat, wäre es wär, äh, nicht okay wenn ich dann hier die Hüfte zeigen würde oder sowas in der Art. <lacht> es sei denn, es wäre ein Pool irgendwo zu sehen im Hintergrund. Dann wäre es okay gewesen, aber alles andere ist nicht okay. Contain sexual themes. I assure you, buddy, they're showing way more than their hips. Some of them are twerking for subs, man. It's not even funny. All of this was to illustrate just how bad Twitch's reputation has become over the years. Sometimes it's hard to believe that a website like this is owned by Amazon or that they even paid a billion dollars for it. But everything I mentioned so far has nothing to do with what's going on right now. No. This is something that is existential to Twitch as a company, its CEO, and even worse, its parent company, Amazon. You have some pretty big Jewish organizations calling Twitch anti-Semitic. Anything from the Times of Israel to the Jerusalem Post, the yeah. Anti-Defamation League reached out to Twitch directly, yeah, and now many call. are calling for the CEO's resignation. It's a very nasty and highly political situation, and I have no yeah. interest in taking any... Ja, er soll sich entschuldigen einfach. Aber naja, mal gucken. Aber irgendwie, irgendwie ist er abgetreffet gerade ein bisschen. Sides. So let's try and talk Über about this in the most hinweg. neutral, objective way possible. Let's go. This entire issue started with a clip you've no doubt seen already of Asmodel calling Palestinian culture inferior, saying that he's not sorry for everything that's been happening there. These people are not your allies. They are not the same as us. They come from an inferior genau, culture diesen, that is horrible. Genau, diesen Clip, da, das war sein Verhängnis gewesen, weil das Thema machst du nicht auf einfach. Wenn du keine Ahnung hast von diesem Thema, bitte nichts sagen. Komm, was war das? Vor eineinhalb Monaten bin ich auf dem Weg nach Hause gegangen und dann hat eine Frau gefragt, wo... Äh, bei uns das Café ist und äh, habe gesagt, ist es da, aber kommt sie mit? Ich, ich muss eh dieselbe Richtung laufen, also von daher äh, ist das nicht so schlimm. Und dann hat sie auch angefangen zu labern wegen, äh, <lacht> wegen die beiden Länd äh, Gruppierungen dann halt zu labern. Ich habe gesagt, ich will ja darüber nichts sagen, weil es ist äh, das Thema mit der Kneifzeige anzufassen, dann würde ich das nicht machen und ähm, 
da ich keine Ahnung habe. Und dann fing sie an, ja, das ist eigentlich ganz einfach, bla bla bla. Nein, das Thema ist nicht einfach. Es ist wirklich nicht einfach, das Thema. Und da halte ich mich auch raus. So gut wie möglich. It kills people for their identity and it is directly antithetical to everything Western values stand for and it is an inferior culture in all ways. That was the clip summed up. As you can see though, it went absolutely viral on October 14th when it happened and it was the talk of the internet. Many people were calling on Twitch to ban him, especially since their terms of service talked about incidents like this specifically. This genau. section in the Twitch Terms of Service is dedicated to protected groups. Anything genau. that portrays a specific group as greedy or unintelligent, comparing groups to animals, insects, pests, parasites, you name it. And one of them is content suggesting that protected group members are subhuman, inhuman, or impure. So of course, there was a strong sentiment that what he had said in that clip fell in that category. Genau, That's not ja. to say that many weren't on his side. Das, uh, no, in fact, there wurde. were. Just like the current conflict between Israel and Palestine ja, right now, this was, this was a very divisive issue. issue. There were mostly Oder two main opinions about gesagt. this. The first opinion seeing him as a monster, as someone who didn't care about people's suffering and would go as far as Glaube to call them nicht. inferior, showing his racist side. The second opinion saw him as a hero, someone who finally said the quiet part out loud what a lot of people have been thinking. Regardless, genau, ja. as soon as his rant was done, Hassan Abi, a streamer on Twitch who happens to be a political commentator on the extreme left, this is an ab... Und er ist immer noch noch nicht gebannt. Immer noch nicht. statement, by the way, immediately called him on stream and tried his best to explain to him the situation of the whole Palestine-Israel war and why he was being insensitive and wrong in his opinion. After that stream, Asman Gold did something extremely rare. Apologize. He said, looking back on it, I was way too much of an asshole about the Palestine thing. My bad. Of course, no one deserves to have their life destroyed, even if they do things or have views I find regressive. You guys deserve more than me saying stupid shit like that. I'll do better. When it came to Twitter, many of the comments were not on his side. He was ratioed yeah. like there was no tomorrow. Well, folks, he said, my bad. I think that's a wrap. <laughs> Shortly afterwards, the consequences to what he had said truly started appearing. The streaming org he had co-founded by the name of OTK released a statement saying I verstehe, wenn ich da voll nur noch verliere, weil da sofort wegen ähm, Atomic Picnic zu spielen halt deswegen, ich verstehe das vollkommen. Aber es ist trotzdem äh, ein gutes Spiel. Das ist nur, er ist ja nicht ganz zurückgetreten, er will ja erstmal eine Pause machen. Er dann sich alles sacken lassen und dann weitermachen. Ja. That we do not agree with anything that Asmongold has said. And that he will be stepping away from OTK and all of its affiliate companies, such as Starforge, a PC building company, Mad Mushroom, a game development studio under OTK, and mm -hmm. Mythic Talent, the talent agency he helped co-found. By the way, fun fact, I'm in this agency. I love Mythic Talent. They're really, really cool. Don't get it twisted, though. The fact that he co-owns it doesn't mean he owns me. I can call him a bald fuck all I want. I can already <laughs> see the comments under this video. No, this is not how it works. Anyway, <laughs> he had to step away from his leadership positions from all of these companies because they didn't want to associate with him anymore. As this was all happening, yet another company decided to cut ties with him, although temporarily, and that's Twitch. They decided to ban him for two weeks following his comments on Palestine. He then made a video outlining his plans moving forward, that he was going to get his life together, that he was finally going to clean his messy ass house, that he realized that Äh, äh, warte, warte, äh. Ja, ich muss eigentlich auch, ich muss eigentlich auch aufräumen bei mir. Aber es ist eigentlich nur Papier und gegen Sack, Mülltonne. Es ist eigentlich bei mir, es ist eigentlich alles auf eine Ecke eigentlich. Und ja, ist so eigentlich schnell gemacht hat bei mir. Aber ich bin immer so faul, das zu machen. Is that he's become an unpleasant person in his opinion the more he spent time online. Aber so that he was reached machen. out to by oh, yeah, the very same people he called inferior and they were very open to not only forgive him but to have a conversation. So we'll see what he ends up doing. However, as people finally got what they wanted and asked what was banned, the conversation shifted to other streamers on Twitch that have said things that were just as bad, actually, if not way worse than what he had said about Palestinians that were not yet banned and, if anything, were genau, encouraged das das by the platform itself. Most people, of course, were referring to Hassan Abi, the same streamer who had spoken to Asmongold after his rant. Why? Well, you only need a couple of examples. On January 2024, a few months after the attacks of October 7th, 
Hassan brought on a Houthi pirate from Yemen to talk on his stream through a video call. He asked them questions about the conflict in Israel and mm. Palestine, about his opinion Aber on numerous things, gespannt. and of das course, so if he problem. watches anime, to Eine which the Houthi said, I watch One Piece. Hassan loved the answer, his community loved the answer, and of course, this got memed. Hassan was heavily criticized by many on Twitch, people who weren't even political in nature. And yet genau. Twitch pretended like it didn't happen. They had nothing to say about it. Uh, yeah, das Problem is halt große Reichweite. Und dann bringt ja Geld, Twitch für, für Twitch auch Geld rein. Das ist das Problem gerade. About it. Let me tell you why that's a big deal. On January 17th, around the same exact time Hassan was interviewing the Houthi pirate from Yemen, the US Department of State designated the Houthis as a terrorist organization. That's because they were attacking commercial ships moving along the Red Sea. They were hindering global trade and attacking innocent people on those ja, vessels that had nothing einfach. to do with the Israel and Palestine ja, war. Twitch's Terms of Service very specifically outlines a section dubbed terrorism and violent extremism in which they say that terrorism and violent extremism promote unlawful violence and spread messages of intolerance. Twitch does not allow content that depicts, glorifies, encourages or supports terrorism or violent extremist actors or acts. This includes threatening to or encouraging others to commit acts that would result in serious physical harm or significant property destruction. For example, you may not want to display or link terrorist or extremist propaganda, including graphic pictures or footage of terrorist or extremist violence, even for the purposes of denouncing such genau, content. Yeah, so richtig. Hassan has successfully promoted a terrorist organization as outlined by the US Department of State. Yeah. I should Und add that he asked a very softball question such Twitch. as, do you know what KFC is? And do you watch anime? This wasn't really journalism, it was just glorifying revolutionaries like he does all the time. He would also show his friend on stream, Nick Polum, footage literal footage of the Houthis taking over these ships in the Red Sea. Mm. I mean, look at this. Group of people that are like, no, we care about also, the Houthis. Also, is it still allowed on Twitch? I don't know. So, we're going to fall. Is it still allowed on your Twitch account? We're going to punish you economically to the best of our ability. And they, and by God, they started doing that and they were doing it real well. So, they started... And by God, they were doing it, and they were doing it real well, guys. Mm. Twitch said in their terms of service, don't show this stuff even if you're gonna denounce it. Not only is he showing it here, but he's not denouncing it. If anything, he's glorifying it. But I think the most interesting thing in all this is what happened in regards to Asmongol. During his segment with Ethan Klein, Hassan sat there and pretty much insinuated that China did Tibet a favor by erasing their culture. Giving the idea oh, ey, that, das yes, ist, their culture is inferior. You can even see Ethan... Das ist so, so eine dumme Aussage, ey. Oh, man. Ja, aber Twitch macht ja nichts dagegen. And making fun of him, like, oh yeah, China did them a favor, didn't they? And he wasn't going against that narrative. Watch. Tibet was literally a feudal uh, slave uh, mandate, uh, uh, in, like... So Autonomous China was, zone. Yeah, kind of on the lava. That was one. I mean, in America, when I say something like this, people get very upset. You know, we, we talk about the Dalai Lama saying "suck my tongue" or whatever. But like, that's not far from the norm in normal Tibetan no. existence before the Communist Party came in and and so China took over. unilaterally took over Tibet. Like well, these are their culture. They basically are trying to, you know, homogenize the culture. If your culture... They're it, trying to squell the religion and the, the, part, the identity. The part of... Yeah, the part of the the part this yeah, yeah, clip yeah. made people draw parallels with what Asmongold said. Mm. How come Hassan can sit there and say that the Tibet people deserve to have their culture erased due to a couple of bad stains in their past yeah, and not face is. any consequences? At this point, this was clear favoritism, but it wasn't just limited to Hassan, it also stretched out to everyone who orbited around him, like that Yemeni Houthi that he brought on his stream. The same Houthi that Hassan had given a platform had posted on Twitter, a man getting impaled. It's a drawing, don't worry. But regardless, it's still a man getting impaled through his ass to his mouth, and the caption reads, the execution that we will carry out on all Zionists. Now the Houthi does have a Twitch account. He was banned on there after this tweet, created an alt account signaling ban evasion, which is against Twitch TOS. That account got banned too. And then after mm -hmm. 12 hours, both of those accounts got unbanned. Let's yep, 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 yep. 
Nur das ist nicht gut. Das ist überhaupt nicht gut. Aber wenn es so weit wie YouTubers das zeigen, sind die entweder für 30 Tage gebannt oder... Oh Mann. Also hier Hüfte zeigen und so alles Mögliche. Das ist dieses äh, Inkonsistenz, was die äh, Twitch-Stuff momentan haben. Bannen, aber wenn das Backlash so groß ist, machen sie wieder Endbahn. Bei einigen, einigen verstehe ich das. Bei einigen ist es No-Go, wie diesem Beispiel jetzt gerade. Das ist No-Go. Listen, you have to understand how crazy this is, okay? Making an alt also, account is ban ja. evasion. Ban evasion is usually very strictly carried out by Twitch, but in this case, it was given a massive exception. This was all happening as the Asmongold stuff was happening too. Hassan was confronted about this, of course, and his response was... Ich fand den Ban von Asmongold ein bisschen überzogen. Für zwei Wochen, vielleicht sieben Tage wäre in Ordnung gewesen, aber in 14 Tagen war ein bisschen, ein bisschen zu viel. Well, hey, at least the drawing he posted wasn't of a Jew, so I don't see what the problem is. <laughs> That's because the man getting impaled on the drawing looked African, so this was nothing more than a very big deflection. This again renewed questions over Hassan's influence and the things he's been doing to this platform, but we were also starting to understand where this favoritism was coming from. Dan Clancy, shortly after taking over as CEO of Twitch, had an interview with Bloomberg, and here's what we discovered in that interview. Not a gamer himself, Clancy mostly watches musicians or talk shows on Twitch. He particularly enjoys leftist political commentator Hassan Pike. Das kannst du gar nicht, uh, oh man. ...who has 2.5 million followers of the platform. I like the frankness and bluntness, Clancy said. He's comfortable saying what he believes. I'm not going to sit here and talk to you about whether Hassan's streams are worth watching or not. Again, I'm here to be objective. All I can say is that eight months after this interview, Hassan brought a Houthi Yemeni on his stream, directly breaking the terms of service on Twitch.tv yeah. and didn't get banned for it. Genau. Und deswegen, äh, es sollte äh, gebannt sein eigentlich, genau deswegen. Aber na gut, na gut. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering what kind of streamers Dan Clancy follows on his own website, this is a clip from him showing the upcoming features on the Twitch app on mobile where you have a function that works like Instagram stories. These are all the streamers he follows. <laughs> Interesting, I kind of see a pattern. <laughs> mm. Now, what brought us today to this breaking point that we are at, this existential threat that Twitch is facing, is the ecosystem that was fostered by Hassan and his community. One of the main people of interest is Frogan a partner Twitch streamer and someone who is considered a close a friend weird. when it comes to Hassan. In mid-2024, Ludwig was or Das Problem von Frogen ist halt, sie hat, äh, war das letzten Monat, vor eineinhalb Monaten, äh, bei der TwitchCon San Diego, äh, auch ziemlich Propaganda verbreitet. Sie wurde jetzt gebannt für 30 Tage, aber sie hat sehr viel Propaganda vorbereitet, äh, bei der TwitchCon San Diego. Und die hat auch so ein paar Aussagen rausgebracht, was ein bisschen schwierig ist oder was sehr schwierig ist sogar. Organizing a charity for Palestine for the people affected by the war. He said he was going to contribute $10,000 of his own money. Frogan's response? Calling him a slur for white people and saying you can keep your 10k, we don't want it. All while she has an emergency rent donation goal at the bottom of her stream. Now, even though Ludwig is considered to be one of Hassan's close friends, Hassan vehemently defended Frogan's usage of the word cracker here, even though she literally is begging for money to pay her rent and hasn't done anything when it comes to donating to Palestinians, Ludwig was giving away $10,000 of his personal money while encouraging his entire community to donate as well. I don't think you need to be a genius to look at this objectively and realize how ridiculous, how much of a farce this all is. Of course, she suffered no consequences. No one did in this case. A trend continued by Twitch. Recently, just on October 20th, 2024, Frogan, yet again with another controversial take, saying that she hopes all American soldiers get PTSD and get denied access to healthcare live on her stream. I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. She literally said every word. Watch. Mm -hmm. I have no pity at all for any fucking soldiers. Distress, thank you so much. I will never have any fucking pity for any fucking soldiers. U.S. military? Who fucking whom? I hope you get PTSD. 
I hope you get no, insurance. man. And I hope you get no health insurance when you get. Genau deswegen, ey. Ja, aber es ist halt Switch gerade momentan. Back into a fucking America. There were no immediate consequences after she had said this, and if anything, it brought attention to her very problematic past associated. Ja, genau. Und sie hat ja ähm, ihr ganze VOD auf YouTube äh, gelöscht, als ob sie irgendwas verstecken wollte. With Twitch. It turned out that Frogan was a part of something genau, called jetzt mit den the Arabs Podcast. And at the latest TwitchCon, back in September of 2024, very recently, they held a panel approved by Twitch in which they had an ethnicity tier list. I'm not even joking. I'm not even making this up. This is real. You know, the das, whole premise of das this war, was... How das war so weird. Das war so weird. Ich habe das gesehen in um, Stream. Uh, ich dachte mir so, what the fuck, ey? What the fuck? How would a streamer react about saying the word Habibi? And they had a bunch of streamers ready with the rankings consisting of Arab, Arab coded, asks permission to say Habibi, thinks Habibi is a slur and wouldn't want to say it, and the last tier being loves Sabra. So of course, Hassan is placed as Arab. I mean, why wouldn't he be? Everyone here loves him and the attention he gives them. A bunch of random streamers that have nothing to do with this. Like, I don't even know why this is a thing, Keine guys. Enough, don't even ask me. And of course, you have the tier saying love Sabra. Now, what is Sabra? According to Israelis, Sabra hummus is the most popular hummus brand in Israel. Everyone there has it in their fridge. I think it's fairly straightforward to assume that love Sabra means Israeli. All right, but it also has a very unfortunate double meaning. Sabra also means a Jew born in Israel. So whether that was intentional or not, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised, but it definitely doesn't help their case. This is practically an ethnicity tier list in which the top is Arab and the bottom is Jewish. <laughs> that is ridiculous, bro. Yep. You can see the sponsors right mm. here. Capcom, Chevron, Samsung. You can see Twitch. Hm. Ja, ich glaube, ich soll meine Samsung-Handy wegschmeißen, glaube ich. <lacht> Und die ganzen Spiele von äh, Capcom auch. This was signed off by Twitch to be on stage. This was streamed at TwitchCon. This was an genau. event at TwitchCon with people sitting in the audience watching. How the hell did this happen? I don't understand. How can this oversight happen like this? This just shows you how much of a mess Twitch is. And yet here they were ranking people based on ethnicity. I just can't believe, I just can't believe this. And you know what the funny thing is? Even if you were Arab, you probably would not want to be a part of this or associate with people like this nee. because this is just <laughs> cringe. What the hell is this? I mean, you have a literal Jew, Ethan Klein right here in Love Subra. Like, come on, man, that's crazy. Speaking of Ethan Klein, he's actually been the biggest critic of Twitch and the CEO regarding all this stuff we've talked about in this video so far. When he, he saw this tier list, he was cotton. outraged. And even though at some point he and Hassan were on great terms, he had a lot of criticism towards his behavior and the people he's promoting. And to many, he was seen in the right. His opinion was warranted that this was crazy. He was saying in his title of his latest podcast, Dan Clancy must resign as Twitch CEO. He also commented on how Hassan reacted yeah, to this tier list and had nothing but positive oh, things so to say about it. Yeah, I sure. think I should mention here that Ethan doesn't even consider himself to be a Zionist. He's against Israel's actions, but the only uh, thing he doesn't want is the 8 passiert. million Jews born in Israel to not be expelled out of the country. This means that the only thing he and Hassan disagree on is the 8 million Jews point. But still, he's being treated like an outcast and put at the bottom of the ethnicity tier list. The objective question to ask here is, if Asmongold had done a tier list with Israeli on top and Palestinian on the bottom, would he have gotten banned, yes or no? There was clear bias at Twitch now towards the whole Palestine and Israel conflict, and as you thought that things could not get worse, it turned out that Ynet, a pretty popular news outlet in Israel, came out with a report saying that Twitch had blocked anyone in Israel from creating a new Twitch account ever since October 13th. That's 20, October 13th, 20, ne? 2023, by the genau, way. So it's ja. been over a year. Some people tried switching to a VPN to Israel and they would get the same thing. The IP was immediately blocked from account creation. This is the error code you would see. Error description, 
blocked country IP. It turned out that ever since them blocking account creation in Israel, people have been reaching out to Twitch support asking, hey, is this normal? And Twitch would reply with something like this. I'm really sorry that you're having issues creating an account. We have reviewed your case thoroughly and can confirm that, unfortunately, you are not eligible to create a Twitch account. As a mm -hmm. result, we will be closing your case at this time. Explaining absolutely nothing about... Das machen sie halt, aber Ukraine und Russland mh, haben sie nicht, das nicht gemacht. The situation and just brushing it off and closing the ticket. This was so big that the Times of Israel picked up this story as well, confirming that yes, users in Israel could not create an account. The Jerusalem Post picked up the story as well, echoing the same things that were said in Ynet and the Times of Israel. A streamer by the name of Dan Can't Stream has made it his life's mission to go after Twitch and prove that they did this deliberately and that this wasn't just a mistake. He says that That's as early as easy. May 2024, there was a small ignored effort with the hashtag Batluath Twitch, which aimed to get Twitch to answer why they could not create accounts from Israeli creators. While we're talking about this, I should mention that this wasn't just related to Israeli citizens, this was also related to Palestinian territories such yeah. as the West Bank and Gaza. So this accusation was pretty damn big, right? Twitch, and especially its parent company Amazon, does not want to be perceived as anti-Semitic, but that was exactly how people were perceiving them now. So not even a day after these accusations started surfacing, Twitch support made a tweet. We wanted to address concerns we've seen about whether we're preventing Twitch account signups in some regions. When signing up for a Twitch account, you can select an account verification method, email or phone. For added protection, following the October 7, 2023 attacks, we temporarily disabled signups with the email verification in Israel and Palestine. That's we did this to prevent posted. uploads of graphic material related to the attack and to protect the safety of users. Signups were not disabled, and we continue to see signups from both regions. Users could choose to sign up with phone verification. We've learned that, inadvertently, we did not re-enable email verification signups for either region. I'm just going to interrupt this tweet real quick to mention something. Mm -hmm. This argument falls apart when you realize that they didn't do this when Russia invaded Ukraine. They didn't Get do off. this to Yemen, they didn't do this to Lebanon, and they didn't do this to Myanmar, a bunch of countries currently at war. Anyway, let's continue. We deeply regret this unacceptable miss and the confusion it has caused. We fixed the issue, meaning all affected users can sign up with email verification. We've also heard concerns about whether our community guidelines apply to all content on our service. We continue to enforce our rules as consistently as possible. <laughs> we are actively reviewing content and taking enforcement action where needed. So this last paragraph was in reference to Frogan and her panel at TwitchCon with the ethnicity tier list as well as Hassan. But they were pretty much saying that, oh, don't worry, only email verification was disabled, phones still worked, we still received signups. However, as you can see right here, they got community noted. You know. Both email registration and phone registration were blocked. Dan can't stream yet again, coming up with a tweet disproving Twitch, saying, hey, Dan Clancy, about mobile signup still working thing, sure doesn't fucking seem like it. Thank God we took recordings before you did damage control, attaches a video showing that mobile signup was not working in Israel saying resign anti-semi to Dan Clancy. So in this video, as you can see, there's gonna be a phone number put in and it doesn't work. The code never arrives. Dan himself quote tweeted the Twitch support tweet saying, we just posted an explanation of what happened on Twitch support. Please look at this tweet. Very sorry about this oversight. It only came to our attention today. As mentioned in the tweet, it did not affect people using mm -hmm. mobile phone verification. Mm -hmm. Again, very sorry this occurred. This was getting so out of hand that even the anti-defamation league an American That's organization really made to stop the defamation of Jewish people had to reach out directly to Twitch to ask for answers and to express their disappointment. Get this on. is when things took a turning point. Look, objectively speaking, when the ADL reaches out to you out of concern as a company, it means that unless you change your course of action, you're about to lose every single sponsor on God's green earth. So Twitch is now in full damage control mode. You know. They immediately reissued a ban on the Houthi Yemeni's Twitch channel. He usually streamed things like Rocket League, right? But this time I think it's permanent. And they banned every single streamer on the Twitch sponsored panel. Let me just remind you. Yeah, and das ist aber nach äh ich will mal sagen, nach einer Monaten passiert, ne? Eineinhalb Monaten haben sie frei rumgelaufen. Jetzt macht Twitch gerade wieder damage control und äh Hat jetzt jeden einzelnen, was auf der Bühne war, uh, gebannt jetzt. So. This was at TwitchCon, but every single Tage. streamer here, including Frogan and Denims, the person who threatened Asmund Gold's life for $30,000, got banned for 30 days. This is not a permanent ban. This is a 30-day ban. 
Now, people were wondering how an oversight like this could happen. Almost a year of people in Israeli yeah. and Palestinian territories not able to create an account truly made people wonder if this was an oversight or if it was done on purpose. Well, Twitch had a lot of layoffs in the beginning of the year, 500 employees, and Dan Can stream pretty much revealed that most of these layoffs were on the trust and safety team and were relocated to a cheaper location, which is Egypt, a country mm -hmm. that doesn't famously have a friendly relationship with Israel. Yeah. So Dan's theory is that this was why the trust and safety team was so anti-Israel because they were Egyptians. As this was all happening, a website by the name of mm -hmm. DanClancySucks.com got made, wirklich. hoping to get him fired saying Dan Clancy's Twitch is an anti-Semitic hellhole, showing you clips of Ethan Klein complaining about this ethnicity tier list they Ja, genauso, wenn hier jetzt irgendwelche Twitch plattern, das ist momentan auch ziemlich groß wie in äh, Rechtspropaganda halt. Und da wird ja nichts dagegen getan, trotz Melden. Er hat a TwitchCon how they banned Israeli and Palestinian accounts, Hassan's many cases of problematic behavior, about how Dan Clancy enjoys watching Hassan. So yes, while the ethnicity tier list streamers got banned for 30 days, Hassan still has not been touched. The reason why yeah. so many are pushing for his ban is for fairness, is for, in their eyes, justice. You know. Many are hoping that now, after the ADL and Stop Antisemitism and many other Jewish organizations reached out to Twitch, that we would find... But it's still 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 frei rum, ich meine hier auf Twitch, dass er noch verfügbar ist. Really see changes when it comes to their very inconsistent bands that have much favoritism attached to them. Whenever someone mentions Twitch, they have to mention Amazon, their parent company, and I'm sure Amazon does not want to have problems with people like the Anti-Defamation League. More importantly though, this all happened under Dan Clancy's leadership. Yeah. And it remains to be seen yeah, whether yeah, Amazon yeah. will force him to resign or whether he'll walk away scot-free. The fact that this is being picked up by a lot of the media is showing that this is going to have a very negative impact on Twitch's reputation, and Amazon will definitely be keeping an eye out on that. Let's see what happens. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you watched till the end, I love you so much. You're awesome. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Love you. Ja, was das schön ist, das ein Ja, okay. Ja, das war mein gutes Video. Von Mutschen. Äh, <lacht> ich weiß nicht, ob da ein bisschen Power erinnern war, aber er hatte versucht, äh, auf, äh, äh, zu 03 zu berichten, wie es war, wie es ging. Wenn man das so sagen darf. Äh, okay. Ähm, ja, Link hier unten. Aber mal gucken. Äh, vielleicht kommt das auf YouTube. Ich, ich glaube, das wird auf YouTube landen. Aber mal gucken. Ähm, okay.